How's it going guys? So today we're gonna to use one of my favorite nodes and geometry nodes to make some really cool kind of hex, hexagon patterns and we're gonna make a really cool sci-fi loop with that. It's gonna be really fun, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so let's go ahead and clear everything out of your scene. Be sure you are in the latest version of Blender. For me, it's 3.1. 3.1 just launched, which allows you to have this really cool feature. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and get a plane. Let's hop into geometry nodes and start designing the cylinder. So I'm gonna go here and click new. I'm gonna delete the group input. I'm gonna hit shift A, go to my mesh primitives and get a cylinder. And we'll drop that right there. We're gonna, we're gonna I'm right here, I'm gonna hit RX90. Right here on the fill type, we'll put none, gives you a hollow tube. On the depth, give it 10. So if you put your depth at 10, that's essentially like uh, taking a regular cylinder and hitting S5. But in this case, it doesn't scale it like that, it just scales it on your uh, X. So now you have this depth of 10 and you're gonna keep your radius there. On vertices, put that at 12. I'm gonna go to the wireframe and your segments at 11. So now we have this fun tube. Let's go ahead and break this up a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and get a separate geometry. We're gonna put that there and then we're gonna get a random value node. Random value here in the separate geometry, make sure to use the faces and then on float here on the random value, go to Boolean and then plug your value into the selection. And then what that's going to do is just kind of break this up a little bit. And then what's really cool is now it allows this inverted. So what this inverted is, is basically the faces that were taken away. You can access this from the inverted tab. So what we're gonna do is get a join geometry, get your join geometry and put the inverted there. And it appears to fill it in, but watch what happens is um, what I'm gonna do is right here on this inverted section, I'm gonna get a subdivide mesh. So we're gonna get a subdivide mesh and put it right there on that inverted. And what it does is it just subdivides that inverted section. And then you can control that from your probability. So you can just have a few or have a lot. So it's a really cool feature. Um, and that really allows you to have this kind of randomness in your, uh, in your scene. What I'm gonna do now is get that dual mesh node, but first we need to triangulate everything. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, search, and then T-R-Y-A, triangulate. But we have to triangulate it in order to access the dual mesh node. Now, now that we have that, we're gonna get dual mesh. D, so shift A, search D, U, A, dual mesh, and watch what happens. Boom. It does delete some things because it kind of messes with it, but also it gives you this really, really cool look. And then you can kind of do this if you want, um, but it's such a cool node. And what you can do is again, go back to your probability and pick where you want the bigger pieces, where you want the smaller pieces, but it gives you this really interesting variation. And you play with that subdivide mesh, you even get some really cool, uh, a really cool look. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and continue modeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a split edges node. So split edges, what that's gonna allow you to do is if we go over here to the modifiers, we're gonna go ahead and add a smooth modifier. And that's going to basically break up these um, pieces so there we go, now we have this really, really cool thing. Let's go ahead and add a uh, solidify node, bring that thickness in however you like, just like that. And then we can also go ahead and bevel. So if we go down here, bring your amount to whatever you like, and then I'm gonna give myself two, actually maybe three segments, and there we have it. We have a really cool looking model that we can play around with. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and Hit this right here, Shift D, that duplicates it. And then we're gonna go right up here on the modifiers and click on uh, geometry nodes. But first we need to go ahead, 
delete the bevel, delete the solidify, and then now we have this. So first thing we need to do is click this number two. That basically means we have two models here. This particular node tree is applied to two models. If you click the two, it makes a new node tree. And then for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that radius out to do this. And it looks like I didn't delete the solidify. So I'll go ahead and delete the solidify, but keep that smooth modifier. So right here on this radius, I'm just gonna keep it right outside our model. So now we have this little flat version of it. And then what we're gonna do is access that flat grid in a sense. So we're gonna get a mesh to curves. We're gonna make basically a wireframe but kind of a round wireframe in a sense. So mesh to curve, then curve to mesh. And we're gonna get a curved circle. Put that there, plug the curve into the curve profile and give yourself a radius of 0 0.005. So now we have this wire, which we can actually bring our smoothness in a little bit and then maybe give our radius 0 0.009, maybe 0 0.01 really behaving differently than what I remember. There we go. So 0 0.02, let's do 0 0.01. Okay, that looks good. So what we're gonna do is make this sort of the glowing portion of our design, but now we've created this. Let's go ahead and start shading it. So here, let's get a set material node. Set material, put that there. Let's go ahead and click on this object here, and then make sure you click on the geometry nodes um, modifier to access all your nodes and get another set material put that there. So let's go ahead and go to the material preview. I'm gonna click this button right here for the materials, click new. Let's go ahead and get a metallic material and make the color farther down here to the gray. And then go here and select that new material. And then here on this, let's click new. Right here on principled, we'll go to emission. I'm gonna make it a nice kind of orangey yellow, bring my strength up to maybe 10. And then right here in this material, select that material. So now we have our materials assigned. And then here, click on the camera view. You can use cycles if you want. We're gonna use Eevee. And then we're gonna click Eevee, click Bloom, Ambient Occlusion, Screen Space Reflections, and Motion Blur. And then in the reflections portion of your uh, Eevee settings, turn off half res trace and bring your trace precision all the way up. And now we're gonna have this really nice looking scene. Let's go ahead and switch over to shading and let's go and make this metallic material a little bit more detailed. Right now it's a, a little bit too simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and here in the principle, I'm just gonna bring this up. Let's get a color ramp and then let's get two nodes, a noise texture and a Voronoi texture. We're gonna make a really cool material here. So right here, if you click on the noise texture, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default, hit Control T and use the object coordinate or just, just get a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Plug that vector into the Voronoi and then we're gonna go ahead and get two color ramps. So I just hit Shift D on the color ramp. I'm gonna highlight these and hit G to move them back and we need to get a mix RGB. Right here, so we're gonna plug the factor of the noise here and the color of the Voronoi here. And we're gonna plug these two together and then plug that into the roughness. Okay, so now we can see this happening here. What we're gonna do is bring this factor over to the left and so we can just focus on the noise texture. So I'm gonna bring my detail to 12, my roughness pretty high, and then you can kind of do crunch in your color ramp to make it more dramatic. And on the black portion, I'm gonna bring it up so that it's not quite so shiny on my noise texture. And then here on the color ramp, we can just bring it over like this. And now we have a really cool material. Let's get a bump node. Plug that bump node into the normal and we'll plug the uh, color of our Voronoi texture into the height. And then you can play with your strength, but the strength looks pretty good for me. Now we've created a really cool and interesting material for the inside of our object. Now we're ready to start the scene and actually start animating. So now that we have this, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna highlight this guy. And um, first off, I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. And I'm gonna hit front, shift A and get my camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little arrow icon, hold down control and bring it back 
for me, it's gonna be on the negative five. Hit the transform and bring your camera to negative five. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my scene. So I'm gonna hit G, move that right about there. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D, move this guy here and Alt D again and move that guy here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit G. What I'm doing when I hit Alt D is making instances. So now I've set up my scene to look like this. So now that we have these three set up, I'm gonna highlight them. I'm gonna hit M to make a new collection. Click new collection and call it loop. Just like that. And then what we can do here is hit Shift A, collection instance loop. And then this is really important if you actually wanna make this a looping animation. Hold down control and you'll see it snap. And once you have it snapped right there, if it's right here, it's touching, we don't want that. But if you bring it right after it touches, you're at a perfect grid. So it's gonna make it basically a distance of an, of an exact amount and then hit Alt D. And then again, holding down control, make it snap. Alt D, holding down control, making it snap to the grid. Alt D, holding down control, like that. And then if I just hit my camera, hit G and middle click, this is the scene we have now set up. So what I'm gonna do here on my camera, hit the little green camera icon and bring my focal length pretty wide. So now you get a really cool wide angle view. And then we can do that. What we're gonna do now is start lighting this a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the render button right up here, get my world brightness all the way down to black. I'm gonna hit, sh and then here in the world, you'll see volume. Click volume where it says none, go here to principled volume and get, put your density at like 0.1 for now. I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a light, get a point light, and then I'm gonna hit G and move it inside of my tube right there. And then we can just make it really bright. So click on the little light icon, make it nice and bright, make it nice and blue, or really whatever color you want. But we're gonna make this nice bright blue. Then I'm gonna hit uh, Alt. Alt D just to make an exact duplicate of that light. If you hit Alt D, when you change this light, it's gonna change that light. So say if I change the color, it changes both of them. But if you wanna control them independently, you would, you'll hit Shift D, not Alt D. So now that we have that, I'm gonna click on my camera. I'm gonna to go to my color management, click on the camera icon. Um, go to the color management right here on Filmic, below it, hit very high contrast. And that's really gonna make your scene look really nice. So now that we have that, I'm gonna click on this light, click on this light, holding down shift, and then I'm gonna hold down control, click on the camera, I'm gonna hit control P for parent, and then click object. And what that does is now if I, if I move my camera, those lights, those lights will move with me. So when we move our camera down the scene, it's gonna look really cool. Right now, the material needs to change, it's a little too bright for me, so we're gonna go back here to shading, I'm gonna hit zero, go to the camera view and click on the render button because we wanna change these materials and context to the scene. So right here, we're gonna bring my base color much farther down. So maybe closer to that black, that looks really nice. And then here on the uh, gray portion of my color ramp, maybe bring it up a little bit. So it's a little, more, a little bit more sturdy looking. And then um, maybe we bring it back, play with that color ramp. And then on the white portion of my Voronoi, because the roughness is still affecting, that's why this portion right here is so dark, I'm gonna click on this white and then bring it to something like that. And there we go. We have a much better looking thing. We can move on with animating. So now that we have that, just for making the math correct, remember how we scaled the cylinder by 10, which technically scaled it by five. And then we had our camera here on the transform at negative five. So if I go here, just click five, it looks like nothing changed. And that's just because we took the camera down by an increment of five, which is right where our instances started and stopped when we were duplicating them. So that's how we're gonna make sure that this is gonna be a perfect loop. So I'm going to add, so right over here, I'm gonna give myself 120 frames. That'll make a five second animation. And then right here on the negative five, I'm going to click this. But before we do that, go to your edit, your preferences and make sure in the animations tab your default interpolation is set to linear. So we're gonna click negative five, the keyframe right by that. Make sure you are at frame zero by hitting the back arrow and then go to the end and do positive five. And then if I press play, 
we've now created this really cool scene. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is click on this object right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that solidify much bigger. So something like this looks about right. So you can just bring that solidify up on these to make it look more like a substantial piece. And there we go. And if you want this animation to be quicker, say we'll give myself 80 frames and then click on my camera and I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna bring this scroll up so we can see my keyframe and drag that to there. Now we have a bigger looking scene. And then for me, I'm gonna click this guy and click this guy and I'm gonna hit G to move it closer to my camera to make everything feel a little bit closer. So now we have that. This is pretty much the animation. Um, what I did in my final animation was I rotated these a little bit to make them look cool. You can, at this point, I'm gonna stop it here so you can kind of add whatever pieces that you wanna add. Uh, but again, you can click one of these, go to the, your transform settings and um, just kind of rotate it if you want and animate that rotation by 360 degrees and you're gonna get a loop. Um, but this is the piece. Um, one little thing you can also do is click on your camera and click on depth of field and then maybe bring your f-stop down so you can make your focus distance close enough, maybe to like there, then bring your f-stop up so you can have some uh, depth of field in your scene. Do whatever you want. Um, but let me show you how to export this and then we can be done. So click on the printer icon right here, save where you wanna save it. On PNG, go to FFmpeg video. That will compile a video for you or you can do a PNG sequence. So we're gonna do FFmpeg. On encoding, go here to MP4. And um, on output quality, go to perceptually lossless, save your file, right up here, render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have something that looks really, really cool and really stunning. So there you guys go. Thank you for watching. I really had fun with this. I'm a big fan of the dual mesh node and how it looks. If you wanna check out real-time materials, again, that is in the description and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.